I um, am cool enough to sit with these two. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you just don't want your reputation sullied by sitting with the two of us. <laughs> no, um, um, uh, not Back to the Future. What's the, the aeroplane? <laughs> the aeroplane? Top Gun. Top Gun's coming out again. Yes. Really? Top Gun. There's a new Top Gun coming out. That would have impacted you a lot as a young man, wouldn't it? Top Gun? No. Nah. Really? Not, not even a little bit. Didn't you watch it? No, I don't remember it. I'm sure I did, but I don't remember it. So if I sang, take my breath away. Yeah, I, I recognize the, the, the song. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not singing it back to you, mate. Oh, no, He's no. He's just refusing now. It's terrible. <laughs> I've heard Sam sing. It's probably for the best. No. <laughs> oh, no. We need to hear his heart. Not What's your favorite singing. song right now? I don't like music. <laughs> oh, oh. No. Actually, actually, Noah, my 13-year-old, was had his earphones in the other day. <clears throat> and he technically wasn't supposed to have his computer on. I said, what are you doing? I said, with my dad voice. And he said, I'm listening to music. I said, what music? He said, Hillsong. I went, well, that's okay then, isn't it? So it wasn't compliments of Gus. It wasn't compliments of Gus. But it's, he, he knows the answer to his Christian dad. I'm listening to Hillsong, dad. It's fine. It's good for me. <laughs> so, but he's come back from Hillsong loving it. So I think um, I'm loving King of Kings, though. Hopefully yeah, the church is loving singing that as yeah, well. Yeah, it's amazing. And I love that section where it talks about, um, and the, the church of God was, church of Christ was born and the spirit lit the flame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really cool to see our church Pretty singing exciting. that. It's yeah, really yeah. cool. It, it'd be really cool if right before that, the, the verse before that, if they mm. started clapping at the end of that verse. Oh, okay. You know, just like applause when Christ rose and all that. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this week, you guys on the front row, actually, I'm thinking we stand on the stairs. Is that all right? Can we do that? Can you why, put that to committee? Why, why do you have to ask permission? Good point. You see, when you, ask, when you ask permission, then I've got to decide something. You know, where if okay. you just did it, then I can say, well, yeah. It's a I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know. Hey, I'll tell you what, if the spirit. If the spirit leads, leads you. you. How's that? Right, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> but, no, I, I, do, I do think when the spirit shows up in the scripture, it does get a little unorthodox, doesn't it? Yeah. The uh, flames fall and people start speaking in other languages and all sorts of things. But I think that's really encouraging. It's really encouraging to see our church uh, singing that song. And also, uh, we're introducing a new song it was, uh, by Phil Wickham, which I think is one maybe you uh, sang about six months ago. You were at a conference yeah, or something. Yeah, you heard about this song? Three, three months ago, we were at the, uh, the large... Uh, the National the, Baptist Pastors Conference for large churches, yeah, yeah. and uh, and they did this song called Living Hope. And as yeah. uh, soon as I heard it, I uh, started looking it up while we were singing. I'm worshiping yeah. with hand, looking it up. With <laughs> yeah, hand, <laughs> googling you know, the lyrics to see what it was. Like a good because, pastor. Because, yeah, well, I had to. Know, I knew I had to bring it home because it, yeah. it was. Amazing. Do you know the song? App? Have you heard it yet? I have heard Rob play it a few times, but <laughs> Rob's practicing. Good to know. Good to know. He's getting it right. So I'm excited. We're going to use that as a reflection in communion this week, awesome. which is really exciting. So uh, for those who haven't heard the song, it's called Living Hope. It's by Phil Wickham, and uh, it is uh, it is one that we're all pretty excited about. Not is it on Spotify? Oh, it's on all of the streaming things. But it's, it's is on, it on, on our, our, our Spotify, Spotify playlist. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> It will be by the time I this airs. <laughs> by the time this airs, it'll be there. So, so go check it out. So last week we left with Sharon was sitting here. I am not Sharon. Really? Uh, fine. Fine. I just thought, the no. I was going to make a red Careful. hair joke, but I'm not I, going to. I told to. you before we started, don't do Don't that. do the red hair right, joke. Right, okay, right, okay. Red Abby, heads are hot-headed. <laughs> That, well, you can say whatever you like, and we can't <laughs> respond. There's I, no. I was going to say, I might have to go get Karen to make this an HR <laughs> issue. Or... It's an HR thing. <laughs> so, um, so last week, uh, and you would have seen the podcast. In fact, I think you might have commented on it. I set a challenge to for us to do a daily devotion, and that was out of the the God and Me um, beginning to the series. Uh, and so, I think you you are the arbiter of of the competition because, of course, competitive uh, spiritual disciplines are where it's at. <laughs> So yes. at, at the end of this conversation, we're going to come back to that, okay? Yes. But last week, um, you spoke about the big but, the moment where God inter... The big but. The big but, exactly. The moment where God interjects in your life. Just um, give, us, give us a bite-sized chunk of, of what we should have taken home from Sunday morning, do you think? Oh, it's very simple. It was the but God. In verse 4 of chapter 2 of Ephesians, it says, but God. Well, before it says that, it's all the bad stuff. It's what our life was like before. Yeah. And then it said, but because of what our life was like before, we deserve God's wrath. And then it says, but God. Yeah. Right? So with the but God, every, all the good stuff happens on the right side of but God. The thing right? that I picked up on was the difficulty we have in talking about the pre 
the, deserving God. That's a that's a really hard concept to think about. We deserved God's wrath. Like that's that's not a modern man thing to be thinking about, is it? This idea that we are sinners and we have fallen short. We almost we have to start with admitting that we fell short. That's which, it, and, that, and, and that's. Uh, it's not a popular thing, but when you when you talk to most people, uh, if you you ask them about their life very, and dig very deep at all, most people don't have a problem re- admitting that they do bad stuff from time to time. They've mm. stolen. They've lied. They've hang on, hang um, on. Do you do bad stuff from time to time? From time to time. That was humble, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> d- d- does Kennedy <laughs> do bad stuff from time to time? From time to time. <laughs> oh, all right. See, I thought you, you had go. a perfect child. I was gonna. Yeah. Oh, I do, but (laughs) (laughs) no. They are born filthy, rotten sinners. Whoa! All all (laughs) of them. (laughs) (laughs) My perfect little angel. Cute little child, a filthy rotten. Dude, we just dear Lord, I just pray. (laughs) But but this is why we we laugh about it. But it is difficult to think of ourselves because uh, potentially we've grown up in generations now that are uh, very much on the. the, the humanistic side of things, uh, this idea of maybe we are God is essentially what that mm. comes back to. Uh, if there is no God, then you become God. You are the arbiter of right and wrong. You are the measure of, of what's good and bad. So uh, maybe to you, Abs, how do you find speaking to young people, which you do every day, uh, do you think they're aware of this idea of God or are you trying to introduce that to them? Do you talk to them about, hey, you know, you've fallen short. Is it hard to have that conversation? Yeah, I think it is hard to have the conversation. And I think especially at the youth age, they're all at different stages of knowing God and their experience of who God is. So how we talk about it can be very different from person to person. So you don't start the conversation with you're a filthy rotten sinner? Uh, probably a bit more gentle than that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think at youth age, they are starting to learn about what is right and what's wrong, what God considers to be sin and not. And, um, yeah, the, it, it starts to be the age where we can have those deeper conversations. Cause in the kids you're working with are stepping out. Mum and dad's authority is still there in most cases, but they're starting to a bit more independent thinking, a bit more, do I actually believe there's a God? And if I believe there's a God, what does that mean about right and wrong? I think you're going to try and and, and uh, touch on a few of these points over the next coming weeks in your encounter nights yes. uh, starting this week. Yeah, so we're back this week for our first encounter night for Term 3. And we are going to follow along loosely with this um, series that the church is doing. We also will be looking at relationships, but then how that looks specifically to youth age kids and so what does it mean to be a youth and do relationship with all sorts of people with our peers with our parents with our teachers um and do that in a way that god wants us to be doing it were you a good kid at school i yes (laughs) (laughs) were you a good kid at school Uh, pretty Pretty much much. pretty much so although i I went to a very very legalistic christian school Mm. so i was actually one of the bad boys, but but, 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 <laughs> but in anyone else's world, there was just else's kind of world, that was kind of I'm an angel. I think but. you said they they did a, a car check one time and found a tape yeah, in your yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you believe this? They actually the, was it the principal or the uh, they would do checks yeah. of your cars to see so if it's like the head of senior school or whatever. And yeah, they check your car and they suspended my driving privileges because I had a a mixtape. You used Ooh, to mix your own, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the song that was playing when they stuck it in to listen was Rock the Casbah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna assume from the, your response that that wasn't a good song to be playing. <laughs> it's, but. it's just funny. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they would suspend me for that. Oh, oh my gosh. Anyway, I could I could just say, Abs, I hate to say this, but every one of your kids would be banned from that school, including <laughs> 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 my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, but you you are you are digging down into some some interesting territory because obviously every child has the morality of their home. Uh, a lot of the kids are, have a church background, some don't. So there's a, there's a fair breadth to... So, so you're, you're talking, I think you, you're going to start with just love God and love your neighbour, right? That's right. So, yeah, Friday we're talking about what, what the purpose of relationship is and the foundation of that is love. And um, God's greatest commandment is love, love God and love your neighbour. So who are our neighbours? Mm. And um, how do we love them all equally? Yeah, 
Oh, it's simple. It's really easy. You just um, just just be nice. But sometimes it's not always easy. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, so, so this week you're you're starting that series. This week we're introducing um, the Phil Wickham song. What else are we uh, What else are we discussing? I, I, you're preaching Sunday night, aren't I you? I am. I'm excited about that. What are you talking about? Nah, don't relationships. Give it away. <laughs> don't give it away. Um, there was a, a great response at the end of the messages on Sunday, and I think we actually have some some uh, some praise points in that people actually said. I'll start walking with Jesus yeah. on Sunday, which is woohoo! Yeah, yeah. But between the two services, there was six or seven um, uh, people that responded to say, "Yes, I want to follow Jesus," and uh, we're going to be following up with them over the next couple of weeks. And it's really exciting. And uh, yeah, most of those were first-time commitments when we actually drilled down with them. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, it was and, and excellent. I excellent. think we need to be saying to anybody watching these things, if you're part of WBC. Um, that's something that we're very passionate about, is giving people the opportunity and services to respond to, to how the Holy Spirit's working and, and, and tapping, that, tapping that door, you know, knocking on that door. So, so I think that's a, a really exciting thing to see that. And that also enables us to have conversations with people at the beginning of their relationship with God, which I find is always a good reminder to me of what it's like to begin with God. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's very stretching for for. Uh, for me, when I think about all these new these people that started a new relationship with God, I'm thinking about okay, what are their next steps, mm. and how do I lead them in that direction uh, as the leader of the church? Hopefully, there's other people involved in actually yeah, working absolutely. with them. Yeah. But uh, but it's sobering. It's mm. like trying to remember when I was there, um, and uh, and what I wish I could have had then, or, mm. or what someone would have taught me or told me. Uh, and uh, the, the natural bent is to go to, here's the formula, here's the seven disciplines you need in your life, and if you uh, say these words, you're okay. If you say these words, you're bad, and, and all these, and you can't go to these places. Or and don't listen to Rock the Casbah. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think that's why legalism is so popular, because it's easy uh, in, in one right, sense. Right, right. Uh, but but we, we, we want to help them grow in their relationship, mm. not in a religion. And, so. and relationship is, we can't overstate it, relationship is complex. It's complicated. It's not one. It's not black and white. It's not. It's not a set of rules that you follow. Otherwise, we'd all have. Well, you've got a perfect marriage. Rob was telling me. Um, <laughs> mine's mine's all right. I think. Yeah, yours? What is it? No, no, we're not. <laughs> so that's a different <laughs> vodcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our relationship could get strained if we uh, <laughs> pursue this too too, too much further. So, that's yeah. the truth. Mm. So um, speaking of relationship, we started this thing with the, the me and God conversation. We discovered that that was grammatically incorrect, but we're okay with it because Simon Young produced these beautiful graphics that we love. So we're going with me and. And and I told them, them Sunday that mm. uh, it was a grammatical error, but I don't think it was because we came up with a new word, mm. meand. Meand. And we decided we're going to meander mm. through oh, the study. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. Love it. Yeah. Mm. So we started with the me and, and I know we, then we talked about um, our daily walk with Christ, which is different for everybody, but we wanted to encourage people with a few uh, different ways. And uh, I know that uh, Sharon's not here, so you can just fill in for her today. Sure. But maybe we'll just touch on that. Well, your daily habit, what would that look like if I was to um, catch up with Abby during the day? Where would you be doing your God time? How would you be doing that? Yeah, so at the moment um, with having a young daughter. Who's perfect. Who is perfect? And not a filthy Dirty run, so no. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna. <laughs> I'm never gonna look at my perfect little girl the same you anymore. You should have seen Jill when I first told her that Hattie was a filthy rotten sinner. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Anyway, I so, I feel sorry like... to, all, to all those who have young babies <laughs> that are filthy sorry, rotten no, sinners. I'm, I'm just gonna pray just to you. <laughs> anyway, keep on with, with your young child. Yeah, right, so with right. my young child, my habit was before having her was um, in the morning, but now um, she wakes up during that time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not as practical. So at the moment I'm tossing in between um, while she's having her afternoon nap, I'll mm -hmm. um, try and get some devotion in there. Like you, I use, uh, like Stan, I use the version app and go through plans um, or I try and get it done before bed at the end of the night. If, But, yeah, mm, one of those mm, two mm. times. Yeah. yeah. Nice. You know what's really cool is God understands you have a almost two-year-old and that mm. it's really com complex and testify and, and, and hard. <laughs> and and he, he's not fussed that you're having to be flexible and flex that. And dare I say, even if you miss a day now and then, 
he gets it. Yeah. Yeah. He understands. But, it, it, we, we, but it's a really important point. If you've got a personality that you're going to beat yourself up uh, over missing a day or over not doing the God stuff right, it can actually, that taps into that legalism thing again, doesn't it? It does. It's so important to live in that grace of God saying, I walk mm. with him daily. Mm. If I've read or not, I'm still aware of his presence in my life. And just to give people that sense of freedom that it's, yeah, there's no, um, well, we're handing out candy today, but, you know, <laughs> you're going to win. So uh, I thought, we did say last week that we'd share a thought. I was, I was thinking, you've, you've done a bunch of devotions this week. What was the thing that jumped off the page at you this week? Yeah, well, um, my, the, the best day was, I think, Saturday, Friday or Saturday, um, as I reflected on all of them and what I'd share. It's Acts chapter 27, and Paul's on, on a boat, which he was on a boat lots. Mm. And, and this one was in the middle of a storm. That happened a few times for Paul. And the ship started breaking apart and, and all that. But when the, the, before it started breaking apart, he told everybody, stay on the ship, and that everybody's going to get to land safely. Mm. Right? So as they're navigating that and the ship does start uh, uh, taking on water, breaking apart, the guys start getting really nervous in that. And the things that really uh, jumped out at me were, th were these. First of all, don't jump ship when things get difficult. <laughs> and as I thought about that, practically applying that to life, I thought about in our marriages, right. in our jobs, ministry. You know, if you're doing a ministry here or something like that, and it gets hard, don't jump ship just because it's getting tough. And then when things are tough, we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. One of the things Paul told them was, hey, guys, you haven't eaten for two weeks. We're almost, we're going to hit land. You need to eat. Take care of yourself. So eat, get rest, take care of yourself so you have strength for the journey when things get difficult. And then when things are tough, we need to stabilize. They dropped four different anchors when the, when yes. the storm was really bad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we need to stabilize. We need to set down those anchors and say, okay, it's, it's, More than it's tough right now. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang on tight, and I'm going to make sure I'm anchored here. And then the last one, when things are tough, we need to dump the extra weight. They, they threw off the, the extra supplies, things they didn't need. Right. So when we're going through a tough patch of life, a tough season in life, Look at what, what can go. What can I set aside? What can I put, a, put over there? The last thing that they, they, they got rid of was the escape route. They had a lifeboat, wow. and some of them wanted to get in it, wow. but they needed to cut that off too. So don't yeah. be looking for the lifeboat. Hang in there. You get the, you get the candy. That's, I, I, got, I got nothing. I got nothing. That's, that's incredible. That's amazing. Uh, I, my, I, the, I love one, Peter. I love, I love one Peter and two, but incredible books. We Those, got lots of Peters here. I love them all. I love all the Peters, all the Peters. Do you know the first Peter or the second Peter? Uh, who's first? I don't know. Which, um, who's, on, who's on first? <laughs> What's on second? And I don't know who's on third. Uh, before we do Abbott Cancelo. Um, <laughs> too late. <laughs> too late. We're already there. Uh, one Peter four says in verse seven, it says, the end of all things is near. Therefore be clear minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. And it's one of those verses that starts out with that phrase, for this reason. So if you go back in the chapter, it starts with this for this reason. And you touched on it before. Loving one another is the challenge. And I love that it gives us this, this idea. It says love deeply, which maybe connects in with, with what you're talking about, about that anchor. What's the anchor of who you are? Mm. Can you love despite a storm can you love despite all of those all of those challenges and it says um i just wrote down a couple of things which actually harkened back to some of the series we did it talks about understanding that the end is near which at times has been taught as a bit of a fear-mongering thing but i tapped back into some of the the god money me stuff that we did uh, around beginning with the end in mind actually living with that sense of there's an eternity up ahead there's a there's a purpose so beginning with the end in mind allows me to love people deeply in the present uh praying with a clear mind is such a big challenge for me uh that idea of pr praying without the other voices and without the shouting that you want to do and all those kind of things mm -hmm. I, I find that prayer and that's why sometimes i'll walk and pray uh, because that helps me just at least my body's got to physically concentrate on god so then i can concentrate a bit more on god that clear mind when praying uh, love and i wrote down love with the fiercest kindness uh, if you can have that intensity to the way you love in other words that anchor of love says it doesn't matter how much like god you know love your enemies if you can say forgive them father if they know not what they do from a cross then i can probably forgive others 
and, and show them love while I'm walking forward. And just that idea that love covers a multitude of sins. We're not here to call one another out and air each other's dirty laundry. We are supposed to work with one another in community and heal together you know and that's one of the anchors one of the foundational uh things of, of just doing life in community because relationship is complex and at times i'm not going to like you but i'm going to love you and uh that's always been a foundational statement even for jody and i in our marriage you know sometimes i don't really like you but i love you deeply i love you with everything i am so it's for this reason i love deeply yeah i thought it was pretty cool so one peter there you go there's my favorite awesome, now awesome Lots of love and forgiveness Aww. is what I just heard there. No, that, that, it's beautiful. And you reminded me when you talked about you and Jody liking each other, not loving each other. My mother-in-law has always said that. Yeah, she? She says, I have to love you, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like you. Here you go. You know, candy so. fixes everything. There you go. Oh. oh, there you go. Some for you, too. By the way, Mom, if you're looking at the podcast or the vodcast, or, hey, hey, come on. Oh, hang on. Hey, now we're going to vacuum. Now you're losing all your marbles. <laughs> <laughs> Lost them ages ago. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, enjoy church this weekend. Youth's on on the Friday nights. Hook into the Facebook if you don't know when youth's on, but Abby will be there and um, making sure our young people hear the gospel and, and get the love of Christ and all those things. The weekend's going to be great we've got communion this weekend as well brand new song with the phil wickham thing and uh next week we'll get another special guest maybe abby will have taken over by then but all good Who knows? all right Who knows? god bless all right. keep doing relationship well <laughs>